we just have to walk with the spirit. We have the spirit inside of us. We just have to align ourselves with the spirit, become one and find our balance. So through Jesus, through that Christ consciousness, we are all going to come back to source. We are all going to come back to one unity consciousness. What you're describing is what I believe is the original and true message of the the what we call the Christian faith. fantastic news. My intensive eight-week course, Alchemy, is relaunching again in September. I am opening the doors again. In Alchemy, I walk you through the step-by-step process to transform lower base heavy emotions into the gold of heart opening consciousness expansion. You will learn to live in a state of flow of giving and receiving abundance, joy, and bliss. Spots are filling up fast. So click here or check the description to have your entire life flipped upside down in the best way imaginable. I am here today with Femi and I hope I pronounced your name correctly. Femi has had a near-death experience, a couple of -of out-of-body experiences, and a spiritual awakening, which we're going to learn about today. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, Mel. I'm super grateful to be here today to share with you and your viewers about my experience on this journey. Likewise. So let's start at the beginning. And could you share with us what you remember of your near-death experience. Yes. So I did have a near-death experience as a child before I turned one year old. I didn't know this at the time until I said to my mom, I seen a picture of my, of my birthday as, as one and I didn't have any, any hair. And I said to my mom, why don't I have any hair? My sister's had hair. Why did you cut mine? And she said, oh, because she almost died. (laughs) And I said, what do you mean? She said, you were really, really sick. You stayed in the hospital for a while. And they couldn't find any veins to inject you. So we had to shave your hair. And then they had to inject you through your head. And I said, okay. And she said, at some point, they're really giving up on you. And said to me to leave the room. Your child is going. She's, She's not breathing fine. This is the end for her. But she said she was led to sit there. And she said, don't worry, I'll sit with my child. And, you know, watch her through it. If she's going to die, I want to be here. And she said she sat there looking at me and my breath was getting slow. It was, everything was getting worse. And she said she heard in her spirit, go outside and get Rob. Speaking of the word Rob, Rob is like a mentalatum. So she she said, that's exactly even what got me in the hospital because I ate that. (laughs) And I got sick and I, and Yeah. And she said, the spirit said to get Rob. And she said, Rob. So she said, okay. So she took a walk outside, across the road, went to get some and came back inside the, the, the clinic. And, and she said, the spirit led her to put it all over my body and just cover me up. And she said, she did as she was told. She put it all over me and cover, covered me up. And she said, maybe some five minutes later, my breath changed. And she was looking at me and I was getting better. She said, the doctors came in and said, oh, your child is breathing fine. What did you do? And she said, she just did as she was instructed from her spirit. And she just put a rub all over me and told them what she'd done. And they were so surprised that I hadn't died. So I believe, even if I don't remember my experience from that time, I did go back somewhere and was brought back to my mom for a reason that I wasn't sure of until I became an adult and had my spiritual experience. And then I was re- reminded about that NDE. So do you think because you had this near-death experience as a baby that it opened you up to be able to have more spiritual experiences? Yes, it did open me up to that because growing up, I grew up as a Christian and in my home, my family was very, very open to spiritual stuff. My mom was a spiritual person and we went to a church that was so into spiritual things and they would have people speaking in tongues and someone else is translating and giving meaning to things that they're saying. And so they always listen out for that. Or so someone said this, it meant that. Do not go here, listen to this. So they always did that kind of thing. So growing up as a child, 
I was exposed to that. I, but I was, I felt different at the time because when they would go into the spirits and speak in tongues, they wanted the children to do it, but I couldn't do it. I didn't know what to say. And I would say in my mind, what do I say? How do I do this? But it wasn't coming for me. And I felt different, you know, I'm like, do I fake it? What do I do? And I remember one time I was trying so hard to try to do what they were doing, but it wasn't coming for me. And I remember saying in my spirit, can I, can I? and I channel something and all of a sudden I just felt this rush I think I was maybe about nine year, nine years old or something I don't remember my age I just felt this rush of energy all over me like electric is going through my whole body I'm crying my eyes is open and I, I just felt led in my spirit to touch everybody from the crown of their head to the sole of the feet everybody that was present in that room so I started doing as I was told and I was doing this to everybody and then I went to my sister who was just outside the house and I said to her, and I did the same thing on her. And I remember her uh, saying, to, gesturing to her, I didn't speak anything. I said, like gesture to her, there's a friend of yours, where is she? And my sister said, no friend. Like she said, nobody. I'm like, gesture to my sister, there's somebody else here. I hadn't even seen the person. And she said, no, she said, oh, I remember my friend is here. So she went to call her friend and I did the same thing on her friend and I went. And after all of that ended, my sister said to me, how did you know my friend was there? I said, I don't know. The spirit just told me somebody else is here that I need to touch. And I touched the person. So I did have that experience. And I knew, I knew for sure I was different. I used to have dreams as a child, very vivid dreams that would come to pass, that I would wake up in the morning and I would see my mom waiting by the bed saying, what did you dream? What did you dream? Because she wanted to hear this thing. She wanted to know about the future. She wanted to know what was going on with me uh, as a child. And I would have her say, I would, I would say to her my dream or say, oh, I didn't dream about nothing. And when I stopped dreaming at some point, she's like, you don't dream anymore. What's wrong with you? You've changed. <laughs> and I said, I don't know. That's just, that's just how it happened as a child. I remember that. Do you remember what any of those dreams were? Yes. I remember one in particular. I, I seen thieves come into the house and I said to my mom, the thieves are coming. I think I was about five and I said to her, the thieves are coming. And she said, oh, no, they cannot come. They're not going to come to our house. I said, but I saw them in, and, and they, they took some things and that. And she said, OK. And we prayed. And it maybe happened two or three days after that. They did come. They didn't hurt anybody. They, you know, took what they wanted to um, take and then they left. So that happened. Another one happened. I remember seeing my dad in a dream and I woke up from that dream crying in that dream I seen had an accident I, it wasn't almost like a dream like I was there I seen it in my eyes I seen the car I seen him everything and I woke up crying I ran to my mom I just seen that he's he, he was in an accident and she said um no it's not it's not possible I said where is he she said he's gone to church and I said what car did he take the black car that's the car I saw and the black car was mom's car and the blue car was his car so I ran outside so check what car was gone. And I'm like, the black car is gone. He took the black car. And that's what I saw in my dream. And I started crying more hysterically. So my mom called me and sat me down and said, see, if you cry and accept that dream, that's what's going to happen. Let's pray together. This time I was much older. Maybe I was 15. Maybe I was 15. And then we prayed together. And she said to me, don't worry, it's not gonna, nothing is going to happen to him. So I, I did not accept that dream because I'd become an adult and I could pray then. So I prayed and stopped crying. And I'm like, okay. And my dad came home safe and I was so happy. But what I took from that was the fact that I prayed and I rejected that thing from happening. <laughs> so so it, it made me open my mind to not accept everything I see in a dream. You can pray about it and you are seeing these things so that you can intervene. If people come together and pray, it can change what's going to happen. So I learned that from that experience. That's very interesting. So we can change the course of future events. Yes. Yes. Like Christ said, when two come together in my name, you know, I'm there. So when we call on Christ to help us, he helps us. Mm -hmm. And it, seems, it sounds like your mom was very accepting of your ability to see the future or to dream of the future? Yes, she was, because like I said, we grew up in a very religious home mm -hmm. and the church we went made, the church we went practiced that heavily. 
seeing the future, telling people about the future and what to do. So she, she wasn't, she was very into spirituality. Like the way she heard in her spirit to get some rub and buy some things, she used to do that. So she was open to the fact that, oh, her child has this gift. Her child dreams of things and it happened. I remember another dream I had as a much older person, maybe I was 18. And I said to her, the thieves are coming again. <laughs> and she said, okay. And I said, she said, they can't come. And I said, no, I know they are coming. This one is going to happen. And I said to her, what I've seen in my dream, they did not check the car. They checked everywhere else in the house, but not the car. So I want you to take your jewelry or whatever you have and put it in your car. So she did. Two days later, they came to the house. Funny, before I came, even I started hearing in my own head what to do. I was laying in bed. I just heard in my spirit, do not sleep naked because maybe I was sleeping with like a tank top. I was back in Nigeria or shot. And I, I stood up to wear something else. Like the spirit said, they are coming. Wear something else. Do not sleep this way. So I did not sleep that way. I wore something else. I laid on the bed. And I also heard in my spirit, put your phone underneath your pillow. They're not going to check there. I did what I was told. <laughs> And they came and what I seen is exactly what happened. They didn't check under my pillow. They didn't take my phone and they checked everywhere in the house, but my mom's car. So they didn't touch her car and they didn't take anything. And she's like, so how did you know? I'm like, you know me. <laughs> I tell you everything I see. I even heard to do this and do that. And she has always, always been open to knowing that her daughter dreams and her daughter sees stuff. So she wasn't. She, she wasn't shy about it or she wasn't embarrassed about it or say to me, it may be fake or something was is satanic. No, she was very open to those kind of things. Amazing. So I have a couple questions about that. The first one is, do you think there are some things that we can't change? Like in that specific dream that you weren't able to change the fact that the thieves came? Yes, yes. Some things, information that we cannot change I'm going to get to that later when I talk about my spiritual awakening mm -hmm. and tell you more about that. That Yes, there are things we cannot change. We just get information and there are things we can change when we pray together and it, can, and it will change. Mm. Can you tell the difference between the two? Yes. Right now, as an adult, as a, someone who sees things more now, yes, I can tell the difference between the two of them. Yes. Okay, and you're going to share more about that later. So for the viewers, stick around because we'll come back to this topic. You, yes. you mentioned to me that you had an out-of-body experience as a child as well. Could you share about that? Yes. So when I was a child, I remember one time sleeping on the bed and I tried to wake up. I couldn't wake up. And then when I finally did wake up, I said to my mom, I was somewhere else. I was, in, I, I was awake, but I couldn't wake up. And she said, oh, that's the witch. They're holding you down. <laughs> they don't want you to wake up. And I remember getting scared as a child. Like, why do the witches do? Why, do, why are they holding me down? Why are they coming to me? <laughs> of, all, of everybody else, why me? So I, I got scared. But it happened a lot. I would see myself awake. I would see my body on the bed. I would see around the room. I would hear people talking, but I could not uh, move. Some people say sleep paralysis. but I, I feel it's different from that because I could move around in the room where I was and I could go to different places and then I'll come back. And when I finally wake up, I would look around. I'm like, I just been here. I just went there and I just done that. How is this happening? But it's because my mom said to me, the witches are holding you down. Every time it happened, I got scared. And I believe that stopped happening because I was afraid. Because when we, when we are afraid of anything, most most of the experiences we're having is going to stop because we've introduced fear. And fear is not of the spirit. You know, when we're with the spirit, there's no fear. Fear is of the flesh. So I think that stopped happening when I was a child because of, of the fear I had. And then when I became an adult, it happened again. And this time, I think I've seen a video on YouTube that said, when these things happen, do not be afraid. Allow yourself to experience it. So I'm like, okay, I'm looking forward to that experience now. I'm in my bed. Like, if it happens for me again, I'm going to let it happen. And I did let it happen as, a, as an adult. I saw myself out of my body again, walking in my uh, house, going to the kitchen, 
uh, going to the living room and I'm going around the house and I'm like, wow, this is amazing. So I'm feeling good. And then I wasn't afraid anymore. And I came back into my body and I'm like, wow, that was um, amazing. Then I had the most amazing out of body experience as an adult when I become spiritually awake. I didn't know at the time. I just done my meditation, finished praying, done my morning routine, done my exercise, and I done my yoga yoga exercise as well. And I just felt the 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 need to lay down and just lay still. So I did that. I lay down and I laid still. And next thing you know, I feel my consciousness consciousness, not myself. Not I couldn't see myself. I felt my consciousness become one with the wind. It's not like I was separate flying in there. I was the wind. The whole, I was the whole wind. And I could feel the wind so intense. I could feel it on my body, on that mat. Like it was blowing it against my cheek. And I'm like, what is going on? Where am I? And immediately I asked that question. My consciousness was then taken again. And it was in the stars. It's quiet now. It's in the stars. And I'm like, I don't see my body. But I, I see myself as this whole consciousness. And I'm wondering, where am I? What's going on? And when I started thinking and bringing my mind into it, I came out of that. I came back in my body. And I'm like, oh, I'm back in this body, you know, and I'm conscious again. And I remember saying, what is that? Who am I? Why did I experience that? But I knew inside of me, it was uh, the source showing me that you are one consciousness. We are one. You are everything at the same time. I, I, I didn't let it go. The next day again, done my whole routine and I felt the need to lay down again. And I've done that again. And this time my consciousness leaves my body and is one back in the, in the sky. And I'm like, I'm back here again. So I quiet it down. I do not get too excited. And I feel myself now out of the stars in the universe. There's no stars. It's just peace and quiet. And it's just beautiful, amazing experience. And I'm like, whoa, this is wonderful. And I'm feeling all of that. All of a sudden, my consciousness is dragged down again, but this time into the sea. And I'm in the water and I'm, I am the water. I wasn't, yeah, I wasn't separate. I, was, I couldn't see myself. I'm like, wow, this is beautiful. This is amazing. And that experience happened and I came out of that. And I'm so excited. I'm like, yes, tomorrow. I don't know who I'm, what I'm, what I'm going to be a part of. I want to try tomorrow. And the next day, nothing happens. <laughs> and, <laughs> and that was it. I'm like, okay, I've experienced that. I am grateful for that experience. It has shown me that we are one consciousness. We are unity consciousness. And everything that we are seeing outside of us or experiencing is all part of one whole source we are part of source i am part of source you are part of source of source as well okay i have to ask you what did it feel <laughs> like to be one with the water amazing <laughs> I, I i i i couldn't feel a body in there but my consciousness was everything that the sea was it was dark quiet under there just like what water is what it feels like the flow Everything. It just felt like water. And I felt like the water. It was beautiful. That's amazing. Because I know being in the sea, even in this human body, is amazing. Especially I when know. you start to like expand your consciousness so that you can start to feel the energy of it yes. beyond the yes. physical. So yes. I yes. can I can only imagine what that would be like. That was amazing. <laughs> Thank well, you. I would I would love to switch gears and ask you about your spiritual awakening experience, which is what I personally most want to hear about. So I would love to yes. hear about the whole process, anything that you want to share. Sure. So I would say my spiritual awakening started even before I knew a sp what spiritual awakening was. I, I started off in a place of not knowing who I was anymore <laughs> because I was in the church and because I grew up Christian and I didn't see myself as one with the, with the church and what the church was doing. It was saying one thing, but it was doing something else. Like the preacher is saying to you, be amazing, be kind, Jesus loves you, 
be compassionate, but the person who's telling me to, to be that himself is not doing that. So I, I felt this is not, this is not right. Something is not right. And I started asking questions because from, from being a child, I'll always ask questions in my head. Why is this so? And why is that? So I started asking questions. Why did Jesus say I should do these things if I cannot even keep up with them? I remember as a child trying to keep up with the Ten Commandments. And I said to myself that day, I'm going to be good today. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to do anything bad. I said that to myself. And I remember when I broke the commandments, I said, oh, I just told a lie. I said I was going to keep it today. I can't keep the commandment. Why is that? You know, because I was afraid I'd done something and I didn't want my mom to hit me. So I said, told a lie. And I said, oh, I can't even keep the Ten Commandments. What's the point of all these things? So growing up as an adult, I, find my, I found myself leaving the church because I said, I cannot keep up with these things. It's all fear telling you you're going to go to hell. God is, God is judging you for this. God is judging you for that. All of that was too much for me. So I left the church. And I'm alone. I do not go to any church. And at some point, I did start going to a church again. But I started hearing so many things about, you have to pay and I'll give you information. <laughs> you have to, yeah, you have to, if you come to me, I'll show you the way. I stayed there because I really did need help. I, I needed help that time. I was with my ex-husband at the time and I was trying to have a baby. There were so many things going on in my life. And I'll go to different people and they'll say different things to me. But I kept having to pay these people and nothing was happening. I'll, I'll pray for you. You're going to have a baby. I'm going to do this for you. And different promises were made. But nothing was happening. So I gave up on that because my dad would always call me. Someone, someone wants to speak to you. He said, he can pray for you. You have to pay. I said, and I said to my dad, I'm done. I don't want to listen to these people anymore. I do not want to. I do not want to hear through somebody else from God. I want to hear God for myself. If there's a God out there, he can speak to me. I want him to speak to me. And that was the end of those having to go to somebody else and <laughs> having to pay somebody else to pray for me. I started praying for myself. I uh, started going to another church and the pastor would say, pray for yourself. You can speak to God yourself. So I felt encouraged, you know, from that church. Like I can speak to God myself. I can talk to God myself. And I remember coming across a video of Miles Morrow's on YouTube. And he said, if you fast for 21 days, for 21 days without any food, just water fast, you're going to be able to speak to God and see God. I'm like, that's exactly what I want. <laughs> I do want to go on a fast. I do want to speak to God because I need you, God, in my life. So I did try to fast, but I could not go complete that fast. I stopped three days after but I still felt complete, you know, in some type of way. Like now I'm free from all these people from the outside trying to tell me what to do and speak to God. I can speak to God for myself. Fast forward into my life. Two years later, I'm with another church and they said, when we're going to do a fast for the beginning of the year for three weeks. So I said, yes, I'm going to join this fast. I'm going to pray for my life. I'm still looking for a baby. Maybe it's three years into my marriage now. I don't remember. I mean, I'm still looking for a chi child. I want to pray. So I joined the fast and I started fasting. So the first week of my fast, I ate. I would eat and break at six o'clock. And on the fifth, on the sixth day, I heard in my spirit, you said you want to speak to God. Do the water fast now. And I knew immediately to do the water fast. I'm like, yes. I took my notes out. I remember the video. I watched everything, what to eat, when to break, what to drink, everything. So I said to my ex-husband then, I'm going to change my fast. I'm not going to be able to assist you as I'm, how I'm assisting you right now because I'm going to um, drink only water. I don't know if I'll have the strength to help you do anything. And I said, okay, that's fine. So I went ahead with my fast and I started the water fast. And everything just felt okay. I just knew what to do from the inside of me. I started the fast the first fifth, uh, few days, maybe the fifth or the sixth day. I remember wanting to craving everything in the world. <laughs> it's almost like everything in the world wanted to come into my system that day. And I remember from the Mars Morals video, he said that on the sixth door there or so, you're going to crave everything, run away from the kitchen. So I said to my ex-husband, I'm done cooking for you. <laughs> now you help yourself. I need to focus. So I went in the room and continued the remainder of my fast in the room. And I remember then I would pray every morning and join the church and pray. And I'll pray, God, help me. I want to have a child. I want to have a baby. I'll pray. And then all of a sudden I saw that I wasn't praying and asking for anything anymore. I just was. 
I didn't need anything. I didn't want to pray for a baby anymore. I didn't want to pray for a better marriage. I just wanted to be there. And I knew it was because I had ex started experiencing myself separate from the flesh. Because the flesh desires is different from the desires of the spirit. So I wasn't asking anymore. I was just being as the spirit. So I stayed there and continued my fast. And on the 10th day, I remember drinking a glass of water. And as I'm drinking the water, uh, uh, I'm done. I'm about, about to put the glass down and I see a silhouette forming in the, in the cup. And I'm looking in the cup. I'm saying, who's that? So it forms a face. And the, I said in my spirit, who's that? And the spirit said to me, that's Jesus. And I'm like, what? I have finally come to this place. I've seen it's here now. And I was so happy. And I called my ex-husband, um, come, come, come see in the cup. Is Jesus here? And he said, yeah. he came and he took the cup from me. He's looking everywhere and he's like, I don't see anything. And I take it back from him. I'm like, I see him there. Jesus is in the cup. He takes it again. He looks around. He doesn't see nothing. And I'm like, just give it to me. <laughs> so I'm staying, looking at the image and taking in all of that love I'm feeling. And all of a sudden, it starts to change again. This time, the thorns on his head starts to form. Like when he was on the cross and there's blood, like the water starts to form this shape. Like, and I'm like, whoa. And I'm like, why is this happening? And the Spirit is saying, mercy mercy i'm here for you you know and i just took all of that in as god has heard me god has answered my prayer i have finally experienced god the way i wanted to experience god if i can see christ then because christ said when you see me you see the father me and the father are one i'm like i can see christ i can see god this is it and i felt so much love and peace there was no more guilt nothing it was just me being in my, in, it was me being how God created us to be. I was dwelling as the spirit being that I am and not the flesh, the human that I am. So I didn't have any fears. I didn't have any worries or doubts. I was ready to go. <laughs> I remember saying, I didn't want to be here. I want to go. I want to continue to experience this, but God is like, that. the spirit inside of me is like, it's time to come back. It's time to, you know, <laughs> uh, eat again. And I said, okay, fine. So I did come back in my body. I did start to eat again, but I said to my spirit again, I want to experience that peace and quiet and calm that I experienced during that fast. How is it going to come to me? How is it going to happen? And I asked and let it go. And I heard in, I, I came across a YouTube video and I seen, I was watching the video and the person in the video said, close your eyes right now and meditate with me. Excuse me. Close your eyes right now and meditate with me. And I did. I closed my eyes and I was listening to what he was saying. And all of a sudden, I just felt myself taken back to that same feeling I felt when I was in that fast. I was in my peace, in my quiet. I didn't feel like I was in the world. You know, I didn't feel like I was in the living room anymore. I was somewhere else. And when I opened my eyes, the spirit said, this is the, this is what you need. And I said, yes, now I'm going to start meditating. I need to connect back to that place of peace, of love, of joy, of inner, inner beauty. It's just amazing. And I think that was what started my whole spiritual journey at the time, which I was, I didn't even know what was happening. But I just started following the leads and everything my spirit was asking me to do, I was doing and it was working for me. Thank you for sharing your experience. Thank you. When you were meditating yes. after your spiritual awakening with the fasting and then you did yes. the meditation. Yes. What was that? What did that feel like to you? So. When I started doing the meditation, it felt like I was going home. So meditation felt like a place of, it felt like where I was meant to be. I did not feel in the world it was too much for me. Because after I'd done that fast, everything about me had changed. Eating had become new for me. Everything I ate felt like I was eating for the first time because everything I was tasting <laughs> Felt like the first time. So everything had changed outside of me. 
the noise. I didn't want too much noise. I didn't want to be where so many people were. So when I went into meditation, I started meditating. It just felt like home. Anytime I sat down and closed my eyes, I'm like, yes, like a deep breath of fresh air. Like I'm home. This is where I'm meant to be. This is the quiet and the peace. So it always took me back to that place. So every chance I got, I sat down to meditate. I, I would meditate in the morning before I go to bed, sometimes in the afternoon if I felt let. And I remember seeing videos on YouTube that would say, if you wake up by 3 a.m., pray or meditate. And I'm like, if I, since I'm waking up at 3 a.m., I'm definitely going to meditate. I would even meditate at that time. And I'll feel so much connection, you know, to, to the source. So meditation in itself you know, is not an awakening tool. Meditation is what connects us to the other side. Meditation is that part that, is that it helps you quiet the body and connect to, to your higher self, connect to your spirit. That's what meditation was doing for me. And I'm a big, I'm, I'm heavy on meditation because it always takes me home. Because I remember after my fast, I wanted to go home. It was just home, somewhere like there, there was somewhere else for me to be. And I'm like, meditation takes me back there. So I always, always sat in meditation and I felt comfortable. I, from my fast, I would say I experienced myself as a spirit being. And I was separated from the flesh and its limitation. I, I see that experience almost like someone who had an NDE as an adult. Because they die, then they're taken out of their body. They experience themselves as the spirit being that they are. And when they come back, they're somebody else. That was what that fast done for, did for me. I experienced myself as the spirit being that I am. And when I came back, I knew I was different. I was no longer the same person. Even if I didn't remember when I was a child what happened during my NDE, I, I, I believe all of that was covered by the programming of the world. Yes, everything I experienced as a child was because I didn't have a choice. Mom said, you're a Christian, go to this church, go to this school. This is how, this is how you dress. Everything that was put on me would not let me experience that because as children, you don't have a choice. Everything your parents tell you to do, that's what you are. You are, you are a creation of your parents' limitations or your parents' uh, ignorance because our parents don't know. They are just going with the flow. They are teaching us what they've been taught. And most times it's things of the world. So I'd learned things that, of the world that told me who I was, but it really wasn't who I was. Underneath all of that, I'm the spirit being who's one with all, one with everybody, who's one with his source, as I've come to know as an adult now through my spiritual um, awakening. So have you found that your spiritual awakening and these meditation experiences that you've done have changed your overall state of consciousness? Oh, yes, <laughs> definitely. Everything about me now is sometimes like when I say to myself, I am the living word. I say to myself that and I'm like, no, don't get all, <laughs> don't get up. that Jesus is the living word. But I'm like, I'm not just a hearer of the word. I'm a doer of the word. I'm now controlled by the spirit. The spirit has given me the gift because Christ came, took my shame, took my guilt, took my karma, took all of that off of me and told me, this is who you are. You are love, you are light and gave me the gift of the spirit. So the gift of the spirit is what? Love, peace, uh, faithfulness, gentleness. All of that is who I think I embody right now because I'm no longer identifying with the limitations of the flesh because I'm no longer the body. I am the spirit being. I am the consciousness behind this body. I do not see myself as the world wants me to be. I'm in the world, but not of the world. So after the spiritual awakening, I found out that we as human beings, we focus so much on the flesh. We think the flesh is the one in charge, but the flesh is not in charge. The spirit is in charge because without the spirit en enabling, the flesh cannot do nothing. The dead cannot eat without the spirit. So we, we are alive and awake now by the spirit's enabling. 
And whatever it is that we are thinking, the Spirit is helping us bring it to pass. So it doesn't matter if it's from a programmed uh, mind or uh, an awakened mind. Whatever you're thinking, the Spirit is doing for you. It's almost like your right and your left hand. I'm right-handed, so I do most things with my right hand. And you would think your right hand is doing everything. But on this side, your left hand is assisting your right hand with everything. It may be in the shadow, like it's not doing nothing. Like in Africa, they would say, oh, do not give someone something with your left hand because it's bad. And I remember saying to my mom, why is it bad? If it's so bad, why don't we cut it off then? <laughs> you know, the, the dark, the dark is not bad. The dark is there so we can have contrast for, for light. So our left hand is there in the shadows, helping, always helping the left hand. We never have to say, maybe you want to pick up your pot up the stove and it's heavy. You never have to say, oh, left hand, help me. No, we don't ask for help. That's the same way, whatever it is we're thinking, the spirit just automatically does it for us. Before you stand up, you say to yourself in your head, I want to stand up. The spirit moves you. That is how we work. But we have been programmed and everything we're doing is from the programmed mind. So it's all God doing everything. And it's all the spirit. It's the spirit of God enabling us to do the things. But we are doing the things of the world. That is the only thing. That's why the world is the way it is today. Because we are doing what we, we've been programmed to do in this world. So this consciousness that I am in now is an, it's a, it's a consciousness of the spirit. I, I am no longer led by the world. I do not do things how the world um, wants me to do it. I do it how the spirit wants me to do it. I, I follow the teachings of Christ. I love effort effortlessly. I do not even, I don't, I don't, I don't think about it. I just be. I remember when my ex-husband was going through a divorce that time, but he was in the hospital and he needed help at the time. And this friend of mine that I was always telling about everything going on with me, I said to her, he needs my help. He wants me to help him do stuff and go to the hospital, but I moved far away. And she's like, are you going to go and help him and do all that? I'm like, yeah. And I remember saying to my mom, he needs my help. My mom said, no, don't go, don't help him. No one could understand why I wanted to go. Even I then could not understand why I was going to go. I did go there. I did help him. But I, I, I said to my friend, I went to the hospital, I helped my ex-husband out. And she said to me, why? Why are you still doing these things for him? I, di I didn't even know it was the compassion from the Christ within enabling me to do that. Because the normal person, normal people in a divorce are fighting, being angry, you betrayed me, you know, you hurt me. I wasn't feeling any of that. I was feeling peace, love, joy. I was happy to help anybody. So it, it felt natural to do that. So me, me, me experiencing myself as this, even I would say to myself, how, why did you do that? How did you do that? I didn't realize it was, now I know that it was the Christ inside of me expressing itself. It's the light inside of me expressing light to others because God is love. Christ is love. That's what Christ said. Love your neighbors, pray for your enemies. Do not uh, judge, judge people. That is exactly how I've been living my life. That is exactly who I am. I, I, when I was a child, I would always um, f fight bullies, not fight them physically. I would fight them with my mouth. I would always talk and fight them with my mouth and say, you know, don't bully this person and go against the bully. But then I realized now as an adult, when things like that happen, I go in there with love and I bring the situation down and I'm able to handle the situation with love now, no longer attacking somebody else. Because me attacking the bully is me doing the same thing the bully is doing to another. So I go in now with so much love, understanding for both parties. The bully may be experiencing bullying at home, so they are taking it out on others. Have compassion for them as well because they don't know what they are doing. Nobody knows what they are doing. We are all ignorant on this earth, and the only way out is through love. And forgiveness, as Christ said, love everybody, forgive everybody seven times, 77 times. <laughs> now I know the meaning of all that. And I'm able to be this way because of that awakening, because of that spirit inside of me. That's how I'm able to be this way. 
What you're describing is what I believe is the original and true message of the the what we call the Christian faith, but originally yes. was the way. I guess it was called the way, the way of Christ. Yes. And I, because I was also raised Christian with a signs and wonders background like yourself. And I reached a point where I also had a spiritual awakening and I started having all of these revelations about things that were written in the Bible and experiencing them in a completely different way. And I remember (laughs) realizing when the New Testament talks about salvation it's not yes. talking about a set of beliefs that you have to mentally agree to. It's talking yeah. about this spiritual awakening, this yes. oneness with, in Christian terminology, what they would call being led by the spirit or oneness with yes. the spirit. And what in other, you know, other spiritual communities might be called oneness with God or, you know, unity consciousness. And it's just yes. so beautiful to hear you describe that and hear it coming (laughs) from more of a Christian language and perspective and understanding that, I mean, would you agree with this, that we're all talking about the same thing with different language? Yes, we're all talking about the same thing. When I became spiritually awake, I said to myself, all religions are saying the same thing. We're just interpreting it through, or, or, or men have interpreted it through their ignorance and everybody feels the need to be part of something and they are more superior to another or it has to be this way or it has to be that way and I was awakened to the fact that it's all love and there's just one source even if you call him God Allah, Brahma whatever you call God doesn't matter it's one source it's all love and we all came from that before we were divided by our minds or ignorance and thinking that, oh, I'm Christian. My church would say, we're the best. Other churches, they are not going to, they're not like us. The Muslims are not going to go to heaven. They don't have Jesus. All of these things and all of these judgments, there is no judgment in love. Love is whole. Love is complete. God loves us. I remember as a child when I would would hear and them say, when you die, there's going to be this screen that's going to show everything you've done, every bad thing you've done. And I'm like, whoa, God is going to bring up the screen and judge me. And I'll feel so much shame, you know. And as an adult, when my spiritual awakening happened and in my spirit, something I'd done would come up. This always happened when maybe someone done something to me. And I wanted to get maybe upset about it. The spirit would just calmly bring that to my mind. And you've done that before. And I forgave you and I loved you. And you loved yourself when you did that. So accept them as they are. And I'm like, oh. So they are not. God is not going to show you all of that to judge you. He's going to show you that darkness so you do not judge others. When you see yourself that I've been doing that as well and I didn't judge myself and God loved me that way, why should I judge somebody else? So God is not all judging and like, you stole, you this, you that, you don't. No, he's only showing you that dark side of you so that you can see the light and see others in the light and see that others are part of this programming that every human is part of. The Bible says, what, because of one, 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 one man's sin, all have fallen short of the glory. And because of one man's um, righteousness, Jesus Christ, all will be saved. So through Jesus, through that Christ consciousness, We are all going to come back to source. We are all going to come back to one unity consciousness. We just have to walk with the spirit. We have the spirit inside of us. I always say, and I would laugh when I say this, like human beings think that we think we are chickens, you know, hens. Mm -hmm. They have wings, but they wouldn't fly until maybe something is trying to attack them. Then they fly. (laughs) So as a Christian, I wouldn't pray. on until if I had a problem and I'll get serious and need help from the spirit and pray. We don't have to wait until then. The spirit is there with us now. It's inside of us. And anything we need is there. It's available to us. We just have to align ourselves with the spirit, become one and find our balance. The flesh and the spirit are working together for our good. Yes, they may go against each other. Like the spirit doesn't want you to do too much (laughs) things of the flesh. And the flesh doesn't want you to go with the spirit. But you must find that balance in between and Christ is the one that brings the balance 
to that to 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 us. So you have to find yourself. You have to find the love that you are because nobody outside, even what, even me, I can't convince another person of all of this I'm saying. It's an inner realization. It's a self-realization. You are going to awaken to this person that you are. Just for, just to put this out there so people don't think she did the fast and she's, spirit, and she's awake spiritually. No, it wasn't the fast that awakened me. It was my will to awaken. I'd gotten tired of life. I was married. I was tired of life. I was, it was during COVID time. Everything just came down crashing on me. And I remember saying to myself, I am tired of everything. I got suicidal and I'm like, God, I want to see you. I want to come meet you. Come take me. I'm done. I remember giving up. And that was around the time the fast was going to come up. So everything was going to come in alignment for me. And God is like, okay, she wants to see me. She's giving up on all of this. That's what the Bible says. Leave the things of the flesh. She's given up all of the things of the flesh. She wants to see me. Let me give her this opportunity. Remember you wanted to fast? Come. Because I had the intention. It's, it's our intention first before. So I don't want people going out there, oh, I'm going to fast and I'm going <laughs> to, no. Take it easy. Take it slow. Everybody's journey is not the same. Ask questions. Keep asking questions. What do I need to be the higher version of myself? What do I need to become better? How can I serve? Because most times we say, I want the world to be a better place. When we pray, oh, if only the world can be a better place. But the prayer should, I, need, I think we should bring the prayer down back home. Instead of praying for the world to be a better place, why don't you pray for humans to be better people? Because the world is perfect. Pray for humans. And if you do not want to pray for humans, come down again. Say, God, make me a better person so I can be that which I want to see in the world. Pray for yourself. Ask for yourself that you want to see a, a better version of yourself. You want to be kind. You want to be compassionate. Ask. Once we ask, it is given. As the Bible says, ask and you shall receive. Knock and the doors will be opened to you. So I did ask first and the doors were opened to me through my fast. I'm so glad that you pointed that out. Thank you so much for sharing that because there are a lot of people who want to know, how can I have an awakening experience like this? And so yes. just to highlight what you said, that it was your will and your intention. And that echoes what a lot of the great masters have said in the past about if you want to reach enlightenment, you have to desire it more than anything. So yes. you had the intention to have a spiritual awakening and then you followed your guidance and for you the yes. correct path was fasting and for someone else they'll need to follow their guidance as to what their yes. path is yes 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 i remember seeing a video of ekatoli saying he he slept and he woke up and everything was different so he didn't have to do a fast everybody's awakening is different some people had nde you had one so it's different ways people are awakening. There's no one straight path like, oh, I have to do this and do that. Because when you start wanting to do all of these things, it's the flesh trying. It's the ego deceiving you to do. You cannot do it by yourself. The Bible says it's not by your power, not by your might, by my spirit. It's still the spirit that's going to enable you. So instead, ask and what you need will come to you. This person that I am able to work with my flesh and spirit because I, I, I experienced myself as a spirit that I am. And that part of me was, it felt so good, so amazing. I'm like, why would I want anything else? You know, why would I want the worries and the, and the, the, the fears of the flesh? This is me. And Christ came, took my shame, took everything away. So it's me finding my balance. Even after the fast happened, and I did experience Christ and all of that happened, I noticed that I fell back into the flesh just a little bit because when I first came out, I felt like I could do anything. Everything I was seeing and asking, it was happening. I will pray for myself and I felt healed. And I could do that because I didn't have any fear, fear in me. The spirit was uh, leading because I just finished the fast. So I wanted to go back to that place. And that's where the whole healing journey began. You have to work on your chakras. You have to heal your inner child, like everybody says. You have to let go, forgive. You have to love yourself. You have to forgive others. 
there's so much work to do on ourselves. Because Christ has come, he has destroyed the old. Like a, like a house, if you break down the house and you want to build something new, when you break it down, what do you do? You start to take out the debris from where you want to build something new. So Christ has broken everything down. Like, this is not you. I could see it wasn't me, but there was work to be done. There was fears to take out of myself. There was worries, trauma. I needed to heal as a, as a child. All of that had to happen. And the Spirit helped me. I didn't know how to do it. I would just be led to a video on YouTube or be led to a book I needed to read about something. Different things. I've, I've, I read a book by, what's her name? Maureen, Maureen St. Germain. I read her book, um, Waking Up in 5D. And that really opened me up to what I could do as a spirit being that I am. Because I didn't know. I was just there and existing. But there was so much I could do that I didn't even know. I could ask for help. I, I, I wouldn't need to, I wouldn't need to set an alarm to wake up. I just speak to my body and say, oh, wake me up by five. And I'm up. And, and all of this started happening. And I knew there was things I could do with the spirit, you know. And I started to see the gifts of the spirit as well. So we, when we experience ourselves as the spirit being that we are, we still have work to do in, for, for the flesh to be able to balance both of them together. I want you to try this with me right now. And maybe your viewers can try as well. Look to your right. Don't turn your head. Just know. Yes, look to your right. You can see everything on your right. Now close your right eyes. Open your left one. Just close your right one. Open your left one. Can you see what's on your right? <laughs> Sorry, I, sorry, I didn't hear you. Not very well. Not, not when I'm looking straight ahead. Exactly. You would have to turn your head all the way to the right to be able to see. That is how we are limited when we are only working as the flesh. We are limited. But when we become one with the spirit as well, when two become one, like the way our hands work together, then we are able to live our lives to the fullest on earth. Like they say, heaven on earth. You're going to experience heaven on earth because you are living in a balanced state with the spirit, flesh and spirit dwelling as one. I could talk to you for so much longer. Like there's so <laughs> many things that you said that I would love to go back to, but I'll just pick one for the okay. sake of time. There's something that you said a few minutes ago, you quoted a Bible passage that in my denomination, people used to argue about like crazy. And it's the one that yes. says, as in Adam, all die, but in Christ, all shall be made alive. And you added yes. one word in there. You said Christ consciousness. And when you said that, I understood that text in a completely different way. Because yes. when I was growing up, people used to argue about, well, I mean, they didn't want to admit that it said all. And they would want to argue <laughs> about, well, only those who our Christian will go to heaven and be saved. And of course, they were taking it to mean saving them, saving people from hell in the afterlife. But yes. what you just said there puts a completely different light on it because I've heard so many people say, like pre-birth experiencers that I have interviewed who remember choosing their lives and they remember choosing to undergo certain circumstances in their life yes. so that they could help clear the collective karma and yes. if we think about Jesus as being one of the most powerful, advanced beings who has ever lived, and then he helping to clear the karma of the world through what he did and the terminology yep. of the Christian language to forgive our sins and take away our shame and all the things you're talking about, then like he's entering that state of consciousness that we're all trying to yes. reach. And he's making it available yes. to us. And so we're all eventually going to follow in that path. Yes, exactly. Yes, it's that consciousness in everybody. Muslim, Christian, Jews, everybody. We all have the spirit inside of us. Because he says the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells inside of you. He didn't say inside of only Christians or only Jews. <laughs> inside of everybody. And all you need to do is call on that spirit to awaken it surrender because when we surrender we are saying i do not know help me you have children 
Remember when me when your child was growing? Because when they become two, they start to act like they know everything. Maybe you try to take her sweeties from her and open it. She's like, no, 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 I'm going to help myself and starts crying. So you leave her to try it. She's trying to open the sweets, but she cannot open it herself. And she comes back and surrenders. Mom, help me. That's exactly how we should surrender to God. I do not know nothing. This world is hard. I surrender. Help me. Once we ask, God comes in and he sends his spirit. He sends his son, Jesus Christ. He sends that consciousness for us. Well, thank you so much, Femi, for being willing to do this interview. I've enjoyed talking to you so much. Would you like to share with the viewers about your YouTube channel and anything else that you want to share? Oh, yes, sure. I do have a YouTube channel where I share about my experience in hopes to help others on the journey as well. Whatever they're experiencing in the journey, if they feel stuck anywhere, maybe my experience, maybe my stories can help them, help them heal, help them, help them move forward on their journey. And I want to say to everybody, God does not judge you. God loves you as you are. God knows you as you are. Stay in your light. Do not, do not, do not judge yourself. Because the darkness, the darkness is going to bring you into the light. Before the seed breaks out of the, of the ground, it's dark before it comes into the light. So your darkness is your experience. Your darkness is not going to take you down. It's not going to um, be the end of you. It's going to bring you into the light. We are all light beings. We are all spirit beings. Or fall, um, <laughs> do not focus so much on your flaws. You are perfect the way you are. God loves you the way you are. Ask 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 and before you believe anything i've said on here or believe anybody ask when you ask it is giving and then you're going to experience for yourself all of these things you're hearing that's all i have to add and also i like to share i will be starting soon a free consultation service for whoever wants to talk or you need someone to talk to you on this journey it can be lonely sometimes i will be announcing that on my channel so if you're interested in that type of thing you are welcome Wonderful. I will have your links in the show notes so people can check those out. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Melissa. I am super grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for watching and listening. Your views, likes, comments, and shares truly make the biggest difference in supporting this channel. Don't forget to check the show notes for all the links to today's guest, as well as my links. You'll find me on social media at Love Cover Life, my website, lovecoverlife.com, and the Be A Guest link for anybody who would like to be a guest on the channel. I have great news. Love Cover Life podcast is coming available on audio podcast. You can find it wherever you listen to your audio podcasts. Thank you.